Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Sisters and brothers, please place both your hands on your heart. The Holy Spirit, God Himself, resides and dwells in our heart. God is in us, sisters and brothers. God is in us. He promised He will never leave us nor forsake us. He is with us till the end of time. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God. He is in us. So as you place both your hands on your heart, pray the three line prayer to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Thank you very much. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Say hallelujah. 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 Are you tired? Are you sure? Yes. Fantastic. Sisters and brothers, first day we spoke on, I mean there are other talks too, but what I'm saying is what I'm doing. The Holy Spirit is the key to the Christian life. Amen? Never, never, never forget it. He is in a different, uh, higher. He is God. He is God. So start praying more to the power of the Holy Spirit. Start making sure you have a good relationship with God. And once you develop a good intimacy with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will, you know, you will soar like an eagle. Amen? I don't know if you know about the eagle's life. Have you studied anything about eagle? You know eagle? Yeah, yeah. eagle's life. You know eagle? No, no. You go to Google, okay? And search eagle's life. That's the Christian's life. Amen? Amen? You will soar like an eagle when you start praying in tongues. This morning we saw uh, uh, the power of praying in tongues. The power of praying in tongues. You know, once I was preaching a, a, priest, a leader's retreat in Divine Retreat Center. Yeah, Chalakudi. 200 leaders. And there were around 160 priests from India, Sri Lanka, and some from Malaysia, and 40 lay leaders from India. So 200. So Father invited me also to be part of the team to preach. So as I was traveling to Cochin, hmm, the Holy Spirit told me something, which I've never done before. Holy Spirit told me, make sure you give all your inputs about the Holy Spirit. Hmm? Speak about me. Enough. I had five sessions, five days retreat, five sessions. So I said, okay, I'm going to speak about the Holy Spirit. So all that I spoke to you yesterday and today I spoke to them. Amen. So you're, re you're receiving the same talks even priests receive. Amen. Huh? You're, you're going up and up. Huh? Very good. Huh? Very good. Yeah. 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 So I spoke to them five days on the gift of tongues, the second session on the use and benefits of tongues, how to walk in victory, how to walk in authority. I want to teach you that tomorrow or today evening maybe. Let's see. How to walk in authority, how to walk in victory all your life. And then the final day was Friday, right? Final day was Friday, yeah, th Friday afternoon, but Thursday. We, I finished my teachings. I'm speaking to these uh, people and then I told them, hey, listen. Fathers and uh, leaders, I want to pray for you. I want to not, I don't want to bring the horse uh, to the pond and leave the horse there, right? No, no, no. Yeah, I said, I want to pray for you for the gift of tongues. But I told them, listen, it is optional. What does optional mean? If you, you know, if you want to be here, be here. If you want to leave the hall, you don't want it, please leave the hall. Yeah, I told them, you can please leave the hall. I'll not feel embarrassed. If there are 10 people, I'll pray for them. Amen. 
if there is one people I'll pray, one person i'll pray for them it doesn't matter so i said uh, it is optional those of you who do not want the gift of tongues 200 people remember 160 priests please leave the hall you know how many left the hall two people two people left the hall 198 stayed in the hall can you imagine 198 so uh, you know it's a massive group the holy spirit has taught me how to pray for people for any gift or any impartation of tongues i stood on the stage i raised my hands and i prayed for them i told them what to do that's what i'm going to do with you to evening yeah i call it impartation of the gift of tongues i prayed for them sisters and brothers you won't believe what happened you know in 30 seconds in 30 seconds everybody 198 people in the hall burst out praying in tongues hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord this is the power of god this is that's why jesus said if any man is thirsty let him come to me if any man is thirsty let him come to me out of his belly will flow rivers of living water jesus was speaking about the holy spirit are you thirsty yes. only few are you thirsty yes. what about behind are you thirsty uh, the last shall be first. Huh? Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. you're thirsty, you will get it. It is not about getting the gift of tongue. You know, some of the priests at the end of that retreat came to me. You know what they asked me? This they asked me this question. They were crying. They were crying. Move of the spirit, you see. They came to me and said, Brother, why nobody tells us about this? Mm -hmm. Why nobody tells us about this? I said, Father, I have no idea why. But thank God you are here. <laughs> yeah? Thank God you are here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I went to Arunachal. Do you know where is Arunachal? Huh? Huh? No, 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 no. Ma, your geography, you must learn, Ma. Madhya Pradesh is northeast of India, border of China. So the bishop invited me. He said, can you preach a priest retreat to my diocese? I said, yeah, sure, why not? So I traveled. Entire diocese, including the auxiliary bishop. And you know, I'm preaching to them. Five full days I'm preaching to them. The auxiliary bishop comes to me and says this. You know, Colin, I want this gift. I, re I, I think this gift will bring more power in my life. I said, bishop, you're right. You're right. It will bring more power in your ministry. So I prayed for all of them. Again, optional. I said, if you want the gift, please come to my room. They all came to my room. 30 seconds, all prayed in tongues. Hallelujah. Yeah. Arunachal is on fire. Amen. <laughs> Mangalore will be on fire. Amen. Amen. Udupi will be on fire. Amen. Amen. Karnataka will be on fire. Amen. Amen. Through you. Through you. Amen. Through you. Don't forget, through you. No, he's praying. So come, Lord. Let your fire come. Let your Holy Spirit come. How will he come? Through us. Through you and me. That's why when you're filled with the power of your spirit, you'll watch, you know, there'll be a sense of mission. There'll be passion. There'll be zeal. There'll be energy in your life. You will want to pass on this truth to other Catholics, people in your family, people in your parish, every single person. Amen. Holy Spirit will put the desire in your heart and he'll make the way for you. So today, I want to second session, uses and benefits of the gift of tongues. Why to pray in a language I don't understand? Why should I pray in a language I don't understand? So I want to give you the uses and the benefits of praying in tongues. But before that, let me just skip all this, yeah, to save time, yeah. Catechism of the Catholic Church or the Catholic Church. Catholic Church says there are three forms of prayer. Are you with me? Yes. Hello? How much is this? Three. How much is this? Three. Okay, you are awake. Huh? So, <laughs> so, the Catholic Church says there are three forms of prayer. What are they? Number one, it's called vocal prayer. Number two, meditation. Number three, contemplation. Three forms of prayer. So we want to ask this question. Where does gift of tongues fit in? Where does gift of tongues fit in? Which form of prayer? Vocal prayer, meditation prayer, contemplation prayer. Yeah? We'll come to that. Let me define this very quickly. What is vocal prayer? Vocal prayer is when you use your vocal cords. Am I right? 
vocal prayer is when you use your vocal cords charismatic spirituality more more is vocal prayer thank you lord hallelujah lord praise you lord bless you lord hallelujah 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 vocal prayer am i right hello yeah okay now for every type of prayer we are going to ask two questions are you with me yeah you have to answer it two questions number one can we pray vocal prayer continually for 10 hours 12 hours can you pray vocal prayer for 10 hours yes or no no don't try it if you try it you will lose your vocal cords <laughs> yeah don't try it second question can you pray vocal prayer anywhere and everywhere no suppose you're traveling in a bus can you pray vocal prayer in the bus? God of Arashtra, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bus will go straight to police station. So you can't pray vocal prayer anywhere and everywhere. So listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. This is not the prayer. St. Paul was saying when he said pray continually, pray without ceasing because you vocal prayer, you cannot pray without ceasing. Hello? Are you with me? So imagine vocal prayer. Imagine if you go to Mangalore fish market, hmm? Udupi fish market, and you want to pray vocal prayer. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Fish market. You know what they'll do? They'll put a fish in your mouth. <laughs> yeah? And they'll tell you, shut up. You can't pray vocal prayer anywhere and everywhere. Point number two, what is it? Meditation. Hey, what is meditation? You see, you must understand what the Bible means by meditation. When the Bible says meditation, it means meditating on the word of God. Meditation is not sitting in a, near a beach, looking at the sunset or sunrise and meditating. No, that is not meditation in the Bible. Not looking at a beautiful mountain and saying how strong my God is. That is not meditation. Don't get, don't get, don't get, uh, let people not take you away. No, meditation in the word of God means meditating on the word of God. You will meditate on the word of God day and night, say Psalm chapter 1 verse 2. Meditation is meditating on what? Word of God. Word of God. So let me ask you the same two questions, right? Same two questions. Can you meditate on the word of God 10 hours a day? Hello? Yes or no? No. Nobody can meditate for 10 hours a day. Unless you go to Sahara Desert, sit there quietly, leave Mangalore, leave Udupi, leave fish curry, go. No, you can't meditate 10 hours a day because you are meditating on the word of God. Imagine, imagine, you are driving. Suddenly you want to meditate on God's word. Imagine you're driving. If you try to do it, you will see God face to face soon. Correct, no? Yeah, you're asking for trouble. You're asking for trouble. Question number two. Can you do meditation anywhere and everywhere? No. You see, all forms of prayer, you know, all... Uh, okay, we'll come to that. Contemplation. What is contemplation? CCC 2709 says, contemplation is contemplating the face of Christ. Contemplation is not, many people misunderstand con contemplation. No, contemplation is not just sitting quietly. Speak loud, your servant is listening. Mm. Doze off. Mm. Mm. That's not contemplation. That is called drowsiness. Yeah, it's not contemplation. Don't fool yourself. Contemplation is being alert to the Lord. Alert. Alert to the face of Christ. St. Teresa of Avila says, Contemplation is the communication or exchange between two loving friends. Loving friends. So don't get sidetracked by some people who say, you know, I look at God, God looks at me. For some people it may work, majority it will not work. If you look at God and God looks at you, why are you in this case? Many people are dead. 
Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Thak, they went. No, it doesn't happen. For some people it may happen, but a minor, very few percentage. Yeah? Contemplation is contemplating the face of Jesus. Yeah? Same two questions. Can you do contemplation 10 hours a day? Hello? Yes or no? Yeah, maybe in retreats, no? Yeah, because most of the people are already contemplating. First session is dead. That is not contemplation. Yeah? You cannot contemplate 10 hours a day. Nobody can. I have spoken to priests. They say, no. We cannot do it. We are, we are active priests. We are active missionaries. We have work. We, go, we are the principal of a college. And you know, we are teaching in a seminary. Of course we cannot do 10 hours a day. Nobody can. Can you do contemplation anywhere and everywhere? No. You see, vocal prayer, meditation, contemplation, you know what happens? You need to find a quiet place to pray. Am I right? Yeah? Yeah. You need to find a quiet place to pray. Why? Free from distractions. If distractions come, your prayer is gone. Am I right? Hello? 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 Yeah? If you, if you have prayed, you will know. If you didn't pray, you say, oh, really? Gift of tongues. Gift of tongues is a prayer of the spirit, right? Hello, are you with me? Gift of tongues is a prayer of the spirit. Where does it come? Vocal, meditation or contemplation? Where? Where? Tell me, where? Hmm. Hmm. Vocal and contemplation. Some, if I pray loudly, it's vocal, right? Deravara shanda, geravara shanda, goramana shanda. Vocal prayer. Yeah, it becomes vocal. But if I pray silently, it becomes contemplative prayer. So gift of tongues normally comes under contemplation. Because it's, contemplation is the prayer of the spirit. Contemplation is praying through the spirit. The gift of tongues comes under contemplation. Why? You're praying through the spirit of God. Amen. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah, come on. Say be alive, please. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, amen. It's, yeah, okay. That, same two questions, right? Same two questions. Hey, can we pray in tongues 10 hours a day? Hello? Yes. I shared stories. My wife prays 8 hours a day. I know people who pray 12 hours a day in tongues, even today. I know another guy in Bangalore who prays 8 hours a day. That's why their ministry has changed. Their life has changed. You are an intercession prayer group, no? Many, yeah? yeah. You must pray in tongues. Others will be saying, Lord, hear my prayer. Lord, hear my prayer. And God does not hear our prayer. That's why in intercession, we don't get too many answers. You must get answers to prayer. Breakthroughs. Spiritual warfare. So you must use the gift of tongue. So contemplation is, can you pray in tongues for 10 hours a day? Yes. Second one. Can we pray in tongues anywhere and everywhere? Yes. Yeah? Yes. You're in, a, you're in a bus. Silently you pray in tongues. Don't keep on looking at your phone. Waste of time. Simply looking, looking, Instagram, that gram, this gram. You see how much of time we waste. You're traveling. Yeah? Pray silently in tongues. Simple. Simple. So you can pray in tongues anywhere and everywhere. I was going to New Zealand to preach a retreat. <laughs> so I got into this flight from Singapore. Singapore to New Zealand is nine hour flight. Night flight. So I decided I am going to pray in tongues right through the night. I didn't put, I didn't put on the entertainment system, nothing. I just said, I'm going to pray. Yes, I prayed in tongues right through the night. Yes, I felt sleepy. I dozed off. But when I woke up, I was praying. When I dozed off, I woke up, I was praying. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. You know, amazing thing happened. I reached New Zealand around uh, 9.30 in the night, New Zealand time. Yeah, there's a seven hour difference, yeah? So, 9.30 in the night, I reached New Zealand. Next day, Nine o'clock morning, I preached the retreat. They, the people like this are sitting there. They, they are shocked. They are telling me, brother, no jet lag for you? I said, no jet lag. 
Why? You are recharged in the spirit. Amen? Refreshed in the spirit. I want to tell you something. If you feel very tired, if you feel very stressed, brain turns. Peace will come, tiredness will go. Amen? Say hallelujah. Why? The spirit is in control of your life now. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah? So what will happen is, so the praying in tongues, you can pray anywhere and everywhere. You're driving, you can pray. You're cooking, you can pray. Amen? Your food will taste better. Yeah. Yeah. When you're walking, pray. We are not talking to anybody. Pray in tongues. Amen? It's the key. It's the key to your life. Pray continuously. One. So one thought. Before I go to the uses and benefits. Second one is, See, you should remember 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 10, we saw this morning, various kinds of tongues. Did you get that morning? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Various kinds of tongues. What does various kinds of tongues mean? Different kinds of tongues. In 1 Corinthians 14, write down. 1 Corinthians 14, nobody explains. Mm -hmm. Nobody touches the chapter. Yeah, but I have explained it to you. You must go to my YouTube channel. We don't have time here, but you must go to my YouTube channel and check. In 1 Corinthians 14, St. Paul is saying there are three types of tongues. Three types of tongues. There are more than three types of tongues, by the way. Yeah, but in the chapter 1 Corinthians 14, Paul is giving three types of tongues. What are they? Number one, it's called a tongue for private use. A tongue for your devotional use, personal devotion. It's called private use. Now a tongue for private use needs no interpretation. Are you with me? Hello, are you getting too? No, it's simple. If you're alert, you'll get it. If you sleep, you lost it. Yeah? If you're feeling sleepy, just get out, wash your face, come back. Who will put you to sleep? Satan, mm -hmm. he doesn't want you to listen to this. He'll give you nice sleep. Yeah, be careful. Don't sleep. So very important. Gift of tongues, three types. Private use. Private use is no interpretation. Why? 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2 we saw this morning. Right? He that prays in an unknown tongue, prays not to man, prays to God. No one understands him. He utters mysteries in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So private use, you're praying to God. Does God need interpretation? No. No. So every morning when I get up for my personal prayer, I pray in tongues. I pray for one hour every single morning. One hour. Personal prayer is only praying in tongues. I pray in tongues. Why? I pray not to man, I pray to God. It needs no interpretation. Are you clear? Hello. 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 Second type of tongue is called public use. Now, this is now important to know. What is this public use? When I use the gift of tongues as a prophecy, are you with me? When I use the gift of tongues as a prophecy in a group setting like this, Paul says, and Paul says, you need interpretation. Suppose, listen to me. Some people have not experienced this. I don't know how it is in Mangalore. But in the early days of the charismatic renewal, I was blessed to be in the early days of the charismatic renewal. I've seen the gift of interpretation. Suppose worship is going on in this group. And the leader of the worship says, let us now remain silent and listen to God. Everybody silent, right? Waiting for a prophecy. Am I right? Imagine, suddenly somebody from back stands up. And he's giving a prophecy in tongue. Suppose he stands up there and says, Thus says the Lord, Dera bada shanda, Goda bada shanda, Gira bada shanda, Gira bana namana. And he sits down. Nobody understood him. Am I right? Nobody understood him. Immediately the leader will say, Let us wait for the interpretation. Why? That, that tongue is addressed to everybody in the group, but nobody understood him. So the leader will say, Let us wait for interpretation. Be silent. Suddenly somebody else may stand up. Someone else may stand up and say, Thus says the Lord and give the uh, interpretation in Konkani. Everybody understood. 
or the same person can give the interpretation also in konkani so public that is called public use when you use the gift of tongues for public use it needs interpretation are you with me hello third type for unbelievers gift of tongues for unbelievers this is the tongue that the 120 received on pentecost day remember on pentecost day what happened people said hey we understand we, we understand what they are saying in our own language yeah yeah so this tongue is for unbelievers so that they will be drawn to christ yeah i heard i was, i heard many people this saying this once i remember one guy sri lankan guy is praying for a spanish person from spain and there's he was praying for this guy and this spanish person asked him excuse me do you know spanish he says no i'm from sri lanka he said you're speaking pure spanish through that gift this man the spanish man encountered jesus christ amen say hallelujah so this gift is for unbelievers that's why it says after pentecost 3000 people were added to the church peter came and he preached boom one shot so this gift can be used three times you know private use we are i am talking about in this retreat what am i talking which which gift private use learn to pray in tongues private needs no interpretation you're praying to god you're praying to god now i run a catholic community in bangalore because all of us are praying in tongues 10 year old children are praying in tongues amen hallelujah so amazing no my daughter before first holy communion right before she received her first holy communion priya and myself prayed for her and she burst out praying in tongues one day before first holy communion communion so in my community children are praying in tongues so well because of that and a lot of people are praying in tongues interpretation of tongues has beginning to surface in our community amen yeah see that charisms somebody gives a tongue somebody else interprets in english this is the power of the early christian life all these gifts were manifested in the charismatic renewal i've been in prayer groups i have led the largest prayer group in bangalore 400 500 strong and this gift was there but now because you no know, nobody is talking about tongues yeah who talks about gift of tongues nobody yeah everything died out charisms died out everything is gone if you start praying in tongues all the nine charisms will come into your life you'll be amazed after you uh, today afternoon or evening i don't know uh, when i pray for you be amazed you'll get the gift of tongues and go home when you go home if anybody is sick lay hands and pray for them they'll get healed one shot Thak. amen, amen. you will see the power of the spirit you don't need me you don't need brother you don't need kevin nobody you hallelujah you are the power of god god has given you the spirit of god you can take you can take jesus to mangalore both of us cannot take jesus to mangalore insufficient but every one of you can take christ to mangalore amen that is it that is why jesus said it is to your advantage i go because if i go i will send the holy spirit he will empower your life your life will become meaningful meaning every day you will get up and thank god for the gift of life amen why because now you have a mission amen you have a mission you have a purpose to live you have a purpose to live and every morning will become a new day hallelujah you won't get up monday morning and say oh monday my god monday i wish it was still sunday yeah, yeah. some people no, never like monday no you never say that every day will be a new day there will be a spring in your step you know you'll be uh, active you'll be energetic you will not be uh, yo, how are you brother oh, okay ma uh, yo, ba. That will go, I'm telling you. If you have pain in your legs and all, it will disappear. Disappear. Amen? Amen? Are you clear about this? Very important. Private use, public use, 
unbelievers. This is 1 Corinthians 14, okay? But I want to give you a rule. Keep this rule in your mind, yeah? This is the rule. Okay, before I come into the rule. You see the gift of tongues, that is private, can be used at a prayer meeting and intercession. Are you with me? For example, here, brothers leading us in worship, and we can pray in tongues. Yeah, though it is public, it needs no interpretation, because we are using the gift of tongues to worship God. Hello, are you with me? So, when brothers leading worship, and then everybody prays in tongues, needs no interpretation. We are worshipping God. The, the prayer language, the gift of tongues is addressed to God, not to man. Are you with me? Okay. What else? So, tongues in prophecy. Yeah? Tongues in prophecy needs interpretation. Okay? Here is the rule. Simple rule. Holy Spirit gave me this beautiful rule. <laughs> Keep it in your mind. And all confusion about the gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues will end in your life. Yeah? This is the rule. When the gift of tongues, are you with me? When the gift of tongues is directed to God, it needs no interpretation. Amen? Clear? When the gift of tongues is directed to God, it needs no interpretation. Rule number two. When the gift of tongues is directed to people, it needs interpretation. Are you with me? <laughs> yes or no? Yes. Hello? Yes. Oh, yeah, you are like that early Christian, totally confused. What is this? Simple. Go to my, go to my YouTube, there is recording going on here. You can take this recording or go to my YouTube channel. Listen to it again. Some, these are, for, unfortunately, these are new truths for us. Yeah? Listen to it again. When the gift of tongues is directed to God, no interpretation. When the gift of tongues is directed to people, yeah? people, assembly, congregation, it needs interpretation. Yeah? Well, I have to move on. Okay? You can ask me some questions. Maybe we should, uh, wanna, evening time, we can have some Q&A, you know? question and answers. Yeah? Yeah, we'll have a question and answers and then I'll use the time to pray for you also. Okay, shall we do that? If you have any question and answers, you can address it to me. Okay, yeah, the, use, the uses and the benefits of praying in tongues. What is, I'm talking about the private use. Remember, private use, which we can use. What is the gift? Number one, you can use the gift to praise God. That's why you can use it in a personal prayer. Just praise God. God is spirit. Remember what Jesus said. John 4, 24, God is spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So every morning, Yes, I keep on praying. 15 years now, I'm praying only in tongues. I don't pray vocal prayer. I don't pray vocal prayer. Anywhere I go, anywhere I go. Doesn't matter what their spirituality is. I'll pray in tongues. That's my spirituality. So I pray in tongues, yeah? Number one, look at this. Acts chapter 10, 45 to 47. Beautiful scripture. Acts chapter 10, 45 to 47. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished, beautiful, astonished, nice word, that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. Who are the circumcised believers? The Jews. Yeah, the Jews were circumcised believers. Now here it is. The circumcised believer had come with Peter. The background of this story is, you know, Peter is known as the apostle to the Jews. Peter, the apostle, uh, no, Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. Who's the Gentiles? Non-Jews. Right? In a sense, we're all Gentiles, right? Non-Jews. So Peter thought those days that Jesus had come only for the Jews. Holy Spirit can be given only to Jews. And one day he is, he's in a house and he gets a vision. Of a man standing at the door and telling Peter, Peter, please come to this house. This man's name is Cornelius. Yeah? Gentile. Cornelius. Yeah, they are praying. They are praying. Come and visit them. And Peter says, no, 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 no. I'm not going to go. He's a, he's a Gentile. I won't go to a Gentile. I'm called to the Jews. <laughs> and then there is a kind of a vision. Lot of reptiles, yeah, different kind of reptiles, yeah. And the Lord says, No, everything is good for you, everything is good for you, kill and eat, yeah. Immediately, he got the message, everybody he has to go to. 
So Peter and all his disciples go to the house of Cornelius. Remember? Gentile. In, when they enter Cornelius' house, they are praying. Why is the word astonished? You know what is the word astonished in English? Astonished means surprised. Huh? How can this happen? Surprise. Why they were surprised? It's important, right? Why was Peter surprised when he went to Cornelius' house? Here it is. Next verse. They heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Hmm. These are Gentiles, non-Jews. Now Peter surprised because he heard Cornelius and his entire family praying in tongues and praising God. He said, oh, they also received the Holy Spirit. Just like us. That's what the verse says. Surely, no one can stand in the way of them being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. That's what surprised him. Hey, they're praying in tongues. You see that? They were praying in tongues and praising God. So you can praise, you can use the gift of tongue to praise God every day. Amen? Beautiful. Just praise God. And if we, you know, how much can we use words, right? Can't use words for more than five minutes, really, you know. So after some time, you know, words escape us. But in the spirit, you can pray for a long time, yeah? So praise God, you know. Again, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. He who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men but to God. No one understands him. He utters mysteries in the spirit. Amen? Say hallelujah. So listen to me. Hello. Listen to me. Don't worry what people say. Yeah? Please don't worry what people say. I know people say what people talk about the gift of tongues. That is because of ignorance. Yeah? If people come to you and talk about gift of tongues saying, no, no, you need interpretation, please show them 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. He that prays in an unknown tongue, prays not to man, prays to God. No one understands him. He utters mysteries in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amazing, right? Amazing. Show them that. If they don't believe that also, forget them. Don't argue with them. Yeah? Don't argue. You know what you should do? Continue to pray. Even more. <laughs> Even more. Yeah, some people ask me also. I said, yeah, this is the word of God. It's helped my life. But they need good teachings. Understanding. So you don't worry. Don't worry about man. Worry about what God thinks of you. Follow God's ways, not man's ways. Amen? Follow God's ways. Be very careful. Not man's ways. Yeah. Point number two. You see personal edification. I shared this a little bit in the morning, right? What is personal edification? You see personal edification means your spirit is growing. Your spirit is growing. Inside the inner man, Paul uses this nice word, the inner man is strengthened, the inner man grows. Spiritually, you'll become a giant. Spiritually. Then you'll get the gift of faith. You'll have the faith of Abraham. You'll have the faith of all the saints. You'll have the faith of Saint Paul. Amen. Amazing. Amazing. Everything will work well for you. Yeah? Edification. Yeah? We already saw this. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Do you know why men go to a gym? In Mangalore, anybody goes to gym? No. Huh? Nobody goes to gym in Mangalore, sir. Gym, gym. You know what is gym? Do, do men go? Do men go or only ladies go? Both go. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. You know why we go to gym? We want to build our body. That's why we go to a gym. But when you pray in tongues, it's like going, to a, going through a, like a spiritual workout. <laughs> Your spirit is getting worked out. You'll grow, the inner man. Faith will come to you. Faith will come to you, which is very, very important. Yeah? Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Write on the scripture quickly. Don't, don't try to open it. You won't get it. Because it's only one chapter. You won't find it. It's only one, one page. By the time you find it, you know Jude, Jude 120, one chapter, see what Jude says. But you dear friends, look at it, build yourselves up in the most holy faith, pray in the Holy Spirit. How do you build up yourself in the holy faith? Pray in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say hallelujah. 
there is another way to build yourself it's through the word of god romans 10 verse 17 romans 10 verse 17 says what faith comes by hearing the word of god faith comes by hearing god's word so there are two ways to grow in faith by hearing the word of god and by praying in tongues hallelujah so people who pray in tongues have an added advantage <laughs> you're getting through the word and you're getting through the spirit amen fantastic you'll grow very fast yeah okay fruitful health when you pray in tongues your health will change my health changed completely i'll share with you look at this beautiful scripture 3 john chapter 1 verse 2 dear friend i pray that you may enjoy good health all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well what is john saying john is saying i pray you may enjoy good health hey friends listen to me good health is not a sin hello correct no good health is not a sin good health is not prosperity gospel in english we use a word you know what it's called in english we use a word health is wealth have you heard of it health is wealth yeah you have good health it's like wealth because today if you go to the hospital gone for you correct no every time you go to the hospital hospital bills are so high no yeah so why you want to go to the hospital just pray in tongues your body will change how many people go to hospital pay a lot of money then they become okay then they get the final bill heart attack correct no yeah see the bill look at what john is saying i pray you may enjoy good health amen say hallelujah say hallelujah then he says then he says that all may go well with you all may go well with you good health family life children finances career business all may go well with you hallelujah and then he says even as your soul is getting along well soul so there is a connection here if your soul soul is spiritual life right if your soul is healthy your body will be healthy amen say hallelujah so when you pray in tongues your body your soul becomes healthy and that life of the spirit will flow into your body and you become perfect you know i was uh, let me share some things of my life to make it practical yeah i had high blood pressure for many years till i learned this i had the gift of tongues but 15 years back i learned to pray for long hours that is the key yeah? not about the gift of tongues long hours i was under uh, every day i had to take a tablet for blood pressure right one day i decided when i came to know this truth one day i decided i'm going to pray for my pressure hmm. i sat on my bed and i prayed in the name of jesus christ i command my blood pressure to become normal i will teach you this in the evening how to command your body how to make your body obey you amen in the name of jesus hallelujah it will obey you in the name of jesus i command my blood pressure to become normal i prayed in tongues 30 seconds you know what happened miracle in 24 hours my blood pressure became normal hallelujah now it is eight years i have not taken a single medication a single tablet for bp amen say hallelujah that's how it is that's how it is when you pray in tongues the life of the spirit is coming into you life of the spirit is coming into you yeah hey my son no let me tell you the story of my son i'm getting time now yeah you know my son when he was born my son was born with a right brain damage my son does not have a right brain crisis right 
big crisis. And because he doesn't have a right brain, my son's left side is weak. My son cannot use his left hand. My son cannot walk. My son cannot talk. My son cannot eat normal food. The doctors told us, you know, your son will remain a vegetable all his life. You know what is a vegetable? Nothing much, you know, same. Your son will be a vegetable all his life. The doctors told me, by the age of 28, your son will die. Because of the degeneration of the brain. What to do? Tell me. As a parent, what will you do? As a parent, what will you do? You will become desperate. Right? Desperate. And so desperate sometimes, you give up on God. Why did you give son like this, right? That's many people's question. I mean, I never asked that. Neither my wife. My son used to get epilepsy. Do you know what is epilepsy? You know, these fits. My son used to get 150 seizures a day. It's called West Syndrome. My son used to take 300 tablets a month. Very hard. Very, very hard. Yeah. First five years was very, very hard. And that's why my wife, Priya, she's a full time missionary like me. Yeah. She withdrew from mission completely because she told me, Colin, you continue to preach. I will take care of Michael. My mission now is Michael. Otherwise, she would have been with me today to preach to you. Because she is better than me. <laughs> yeah? The better one is at home. But she is alive in the spirit because she is praying in tongues. Otherwise, you can get depressed, no? Depression will come. Especially if you are traveling and you cannot travel anymore. You are preaching, you cannot preach anymore. You can get depressed. But not my wife. When you come to Bangalore, you must meet her. She'll put fire into your life. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Full of the spirit. That is the power of praying in tongues. So my son's story is this. And then, we started praying for our son. You see, nothing is beyond God. Amen? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah? Nothing is beyond God. Hope does not disappoint us. We started praying for our son in the gift of tongues. Let me see if the scripture is there. Okay. Okay, it's not there. Okay. We started praying for our sons. How? Hey, how much to pray in English, right? <laughs> what to pray in English for our son? How much to pray? After some time, finished. So we started praying for him in tongues. Tongues. And we started quoting two scriptures. Write it down. If anybody is sick, this is the key. Pray in tongues, these two scriptures. Romans 8, 11. Romans 8, 11 and 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2, 24. Romans 8, 11 and 1 Peter 2, 24. This is the story. Listen to me. Yeah. Romans 8, 11 says, The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. He'll bring life to your mortal body. Hallelujah. Who raised Jesus from the dead? Holy Spirit. So Paul is saying, the same Holy Spirit is in you. And he can resurrect your life. Amen? Amen. So nothing is impossible. We pray the scripture every day into our son. 1 Peter 2.24 By the wounds of Jesus, you have been healed. By the wounds of Jesus, you have been healed. That means what? Jesus has already brought healing for my son. Finished 2000 years ago. So we pray in tongues for our son. I want to tell you the miracle. Yeah, I'm cutting the story short. Yeah, the miracle is this 2007 story. My son is five years old. 
and because his seizures were 300 then it came down to 150 and the doctors were worried he may get a permanent seizure and he may die so doctors told us you know we better is to do a surgery and what is the surgery complicated surgery the doctor said we will disconnect his right brain fully and if you disconnect the brain life is gone correct hello yeah life is gone so we also didn't know much about it I mean, we prayed we asked people we asked other doctors but anyway we said okay hmm. so we put him in the hospital March 6th 2007 so they shaved his head preparing him for the surgery March 8th is the surgery 12 hour surgery my son is five years old and the doctors called us and told us this prayer myself doctor said you know this is high risk surgery this surgery has never been done in our hospital 50 50 chances your son may even die on the operating table shall we do you want us to go ahead with the surgery so we said uh, yeah we brought him here but before I could bring him to the hospital Priya told me this you know we will offer Michael as Abraham offered Isaac so we took our offering to the hospital and now 7th yeah March 7th so 6th evening the 8 doctors they came and told us you know we are going to stop all these medicines He's taking 300 tablets. The medicine will interfere with the surgery. We are going to stop it, which means all his seizures are going to increase. Can you, can you handle him for one more night? So we said, yeah, we will handle him for one more night. We have gone through many nights of without sleep. <laughs> one more night. And it was a difficult night. But we came through by the grace of God morning came and at 10.30 morning doctors came first question they, they examined my son and then they asked me a question did Michael get a seizure this morning and I told him no he didn't get a seizure the minute I told him no the doctor was surprised he said how can it be possible I removed all the medicines it should become more you are saying no he was confused I could see it in his face then he told me I will come at 4.30 and examine your son again. I said, fine. We were not surprised, you know why? There were days in the life of Michael, some days, he never got a seizure. Not even one. And they were the worst days. They were even worse. Because it's like, you know, it's like an electrical kind of a thing, you know. It's built up in your mind, but it is not coming out. <laughs> it's worse. Then he used to take his head and hit the wall. You know, fully blue and oh, anyway. Four o'clock, seventh evening. Again, eight doctors come, examine my son. Same question to me. Did Michael get a seizure this morning? I said, no. Shocked. I could see it in the doctor's face. So I asked the doctor, mm, what are you going to do? He said, no, I cannot understand this. For me, he's a Hindu doctor. He said, for me, it is a medical miracle. <laughs> yeah, medical miracle. I have never seen anything like this in my life. So then what are you going to do? He told me, I want to discharge him. I said, huh. I said what? Discharge him. So I asked him, can we keep him for one more night? Observation. My home was very far from the hospital. One more night. Observation. You know what the doctor told me? No, I cannot understand this. But here is my card, my personal number. I discharge your son. If he gets the seizure at 2 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the morning, don't hesitate to call me. This is my personal number. Call me, I'll send the ambulance. The operation theater is booked for the 8th morning. We'll do the surgery. Will you believe, sisters and brothers? The hospital refunded all my money. Can you believe it? Amen. Amen. Because the doctor said, I just cannot understand this. 
March 7, 2007. Till today, not a single seizure, completely healed. Amen. Say hallelujah. Shall we give Jesus a big clap? Come on, everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Not a single seizure till today. Finished. Done. Hallelujah. Nothing is impossible if you pray in tongues. Really, I'm amazed. You know, my son could not walk for nine years. He used to move in the house like this. On his two knees, wherever he went, like this. He had no power in his left leg to stand up. What we are doing? Praying in tongues, Romans 8, 11. Sorry. Romans 8, 11. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. It will bring life to your mortal body. Hallelujah. Prayed for his prayer. Pray. Never leave. Never give up. We, we, we pray every day for him. You know what happened? Miracle. One day, this is, uh, yeah, I forgot the date now. We are having dinner at home and my son is moving on his knees everywhere. Suddenly, my son held the wall and just stood up and he walked. My son walks very well now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. My son walks very, very well. Amen. He can climb a steps. He can climb steps. He can go down the steps. Hallelujah, isn't it? My son is to take 300 tablets a month. You know, normally, you know what they do? They at least have a maintenance dose. You know what is a maintenance dose? Maintenance dose means some, you know, my son now is six years. Now six years. is not even on a maintenance dose. He doesn't even take a single tablet now. Completely healed. Amen. This is, sisters and brothers, praying in tongues is powerful. It will bring the life of the spirit into your body. To your children. Learn to pray in tongues and don't lose hope. Don't pray for just two. Some people say, brother, I'm praying for two days. What can happen in two days, ma? All these Catholics, I tell you. Two days. Pray long. I'm praying for my son. My son today is 22 years. I'm praying for him 22 years. And I will never give up. Amen? Persistence will win the battle. Amen? Persistence will win the battle. I will never give up. I will persist. I will win the battle. Amen. 12.15, no? Yeah. I will win the battle. I will win the battle. My son cannot talk. Still. 22 years. He has not called me daddy. Mm -hmm. We are praying. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in him. He will bring life to his mortal body. Amen. 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 He will speak and he will come to Mangalore and preach to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah? Yes. You watch and see. My son will become an evangelist. Amen. His testimony will draw people to the Lord. My son couldn't eat normal food. Normal food. My son lived on porridge for 18 years. How difficult, right? Ah, oh, amazing. Priya is amazing. She is a woman of God. To take care of him cheerfully, joyfully, and still minister to the outside world. Wow. We need men and women like that, right? Yeah, men and women like that. Who will never give up. Who will never give up. We will never give up. We will never give up. And suddenly one day, my son suddenly started eating normal food. Now he eats all meat, everything. Biryani is his favorite. <laughs> you won't believe. Every night he eats biryani. He wants biryani every night. He's making up for the lost time. Hmm. Hallelujah. What a joy to see him eat, you know. Such a joy. Sisters and brothers, research was done in the U.S., in the U.S., let, it, let me see if it is here. Yeah. Research was done in the U.S. This research is this. They're saying, when you pray in tongues, your immunity level will increase. 30%, 40%. That's why nothing will hit you. You start praying in tongues, 
yeah, cold, sneezing. Some people get up morning, cha, 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 cha. Bappa. Correct, no? Yeah. All will disappear. Disappear in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Nothing will you won't get to you know, cold season, cold summer season, this change of weather. Uh, that's why I'm all gone, disappeared. You'll never have it. You live like me, perfect health. Look at me. Perfect health. You know my age? <laughs> you know my age? I'm senior citizen. You know that? Yeah. And I still travel the globe. I travel, I preach like this, eat anything, drink anything. I'm 66 years old. Hallelujah. Yeah. You'll become like that. Be strong. Don't say, brother, senior citizen, brother. So what, ma? God is in you, ma. Yeah. Make sure you live. Pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Yeah, quickly. Intercession, because you're an intercession group. I got 15 more minutes, yeah. Intercession. Sisters and brothers, pray in tongues during intercession. Hello. I don't only pray in Konkani, only in Kannada. Kannada. I'll tell you one thing. Listen to me carefully. Do you know who knows all the languages in the world? Devil. Yeah. I'm, hey, listen to me. Devil knows Konkani better than you. He knows Kannada better than you. The minute you pray in Konkani in Kannada, devil knows your strategy. He will block you. Finished. Close. You made it public. I am going to do this. I am going here. I am going there. Aha. Uh -huh. Devil will say, really? He will put a block. We in army, army, military people use this word ambush. A M B U S H. You know what is an ambush? If they know the enemy is coming like this, they will ambush the enemy, kill it, one shot. Enemy will do the same thing. If you talk too much in your own language, if you pray in tongues, enemy is confused. Who is confused? Devil is confused. What's that? I never heard a language like that. You'll get a breakthrough. Shut tuck, one shot. <laughs> Hallelujah. Power. That's why I pray. I mean, you know, you won't believe I got 10,000 testimonies. 10,000. Not only mine, world over. COVID time, right? No travel, no ministry, right? Nobody can go out, right? Lockdown, right? COVID time. So we got onto Zoom. My wife and myself started Zoom sessions on gift of tongues. Gift of tongues. Three evenings. You know how many people we reached during COVID time for this gift of tongues? 50,000 people world over. 35,000 people. 35,000 people receive the gift of tongues. Amen. Online. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Power. Power. So don't just, you know, you have the gift. You have the Holy Spirit in you. Use it. Pray in tongues more and you'll be an overcomer. Quickly, intercession. Yeah. Learn to pray in tongues. Romans 8.26 says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know how we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Amen. We do not know how to pray. Who's saying? St. Paul. We do not know how to pray. We do not know how to pray. What to pray for? But the Holy Spirit knows your need. Knows your need. Knows your need. All I have to do is think of you and pray and Holy Spirit will minister to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. We as a community pray every Wednesday. Online intercession. Yeah. The rule in our community intercession is this. State the intention, so for example, let's pray for the Holy Catholic Church and then we pray in tongues. One full minute, we pray, everybody prays in tongues. During these elections, from April 1st to April 30th, seven of us, seven of us made a covenant, prayer covenant. Seven of us are praying every day, nine to ten, night, nine to ten. In tongues. Of course, we pray in English and then pray lot one minute in tongues for the elections. Who can change our country? Holy Spirit. Amen. 
say hallelujah no man can change it no party can change it am i right no party can change it god can god can god can he will bring this he, he, he will do it it's his work that's why isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says the government is on my shoulder amen the government is on my shoulder it's on the shoulder of god don't worry we continue to work we continue to do well yeah very very important learn to pray in tongues learn to intercede for your family for the church pray group country world what about your children what about your friends pray pray more because when you pray in tongues look at this when you pray in tongues you pray according to the perfect will of god amen which prayer will god answer god will only answer that prayer that is in accordance to the will of god look at romans and the holy spirit who searches our hearts and desires the knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for god's people according to the will of god amen can you see the diagram can you see the diagram you will never be like this you will never be like this if you pray in tongues where should i go what is god's will what is his plan which route to take which job to take should i migrate to another country you will never be in a position like this because the holy spirit that dwells in you is alive now he will direct your path hallelujah last point huh? there is many go to my youtube channel yeah sanctification you know what is sanctification holiness when you pray in tongues holy spirit will make you pure sanctify you make you holy in thought word and deed hallelujah how wonderful right that's why it's called the holy spirit his mission is to make you holy we cannot become holy by our good life by charity by fasting by prayer we cannot only one person can make us holy he is holy spirit so what must you do pray in tongues pray in tongues he will change your thought life he will remove all sinful habits in your life holy spirit will do it for you yeah uh, 1 thessalonians 5 23 and 24 says now may the god of peace make you holy in every way and may your whole spirit soul and body be kept blameless until our lord jesus christ comes again hallelujah this is the power of the holy spirit you'll be amazed he will purify your life and that is the power of the holy spirit okay yeah uh, i'm going to skip a few things yeah i'll just come to the last one yeah we'll close with this you know in coimbatore 2019 2019 there is an outbreak of swine flu h1n1 many died in coimbatore many were dying and this guy also caught h1n1 and doctors put him the icu and the doctors let me see if it is here let me, yeah yeah gave him 20 percent survival said no chance no chance his wife's name is deepa someone told her why don't you contact priya and priya will pray for your husband so deepa contacted my wife priya this guy is in the icu priya started praying for him on the phone of course on the phone she prayed every day she called him at four o'clock in the evening and prayed for him and one day she, priya asked deepa deepa do you pray in tongues deepa said no sister i don't pray in tongues i don't know what it is but if it is going to help me i want the gift so priya said sure let me pray for you so priya prayed for her on the phone and deepa received the gift of tongues online yeah praise god and then what happened is 
Deepa started praying for her husband in tongues. And a miracle happened. <laughs> miracle happened. This guy, 20% survival. Suddenly one day, doctors called Deepa and said, Deepa, your husband's eyes have closed. It means for us, he will only live for three more hours. Please go and see him. So, Deepa went to the ICU. There is her husband's body, eyes closed. There are nurses around his body. But Deepa didn't panic. You see, Deepa didn't break down. You know why? She was praying in tongues. You are spiritually strengthened. You see that? Spiritually strong. So she stood at the bed and this is how she prayed. Priya taught her how to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command your eyes to open. See that authority. I'll teach you that in the evening. Yeah? How to pray in authority. Authority. In the name of Jesus, I command your eyes to open. You know what happened? His eyes opened. One shot. Amen. And the nurses, you know, you must, the nurses were shocked. They ran and told the doctors in the next room. The doctors came running. They saw this guy, op eyes open. They, they were shocked. You know, this guy got discharged. Hmm. Yeah, completely healed. Discharged. And here's another photo. Yeah, totally discharged. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah, glory to God. This is how we live. This is how we live. That's not the end of the story. Do you know how much his medical bill was? His medical bill was 38 lakhs. As I told you, you, know, you can get better and get a heart attack when you see the bill. But, you know, Deepa writes and says, Sister, miracle. God sent 38 lakhs. And he got discharged. Hallelujah. Wow. Amazing story. <laughs> Amazing story. She's in Coimbatore now. Husband, you see. So let me close with this, yeah? I want to close with this. When you pray in tongues, you counter the strategy of the enemy. That's why you are an intercession group. Yeah? You, have a, you do spiritual warfare, no? Spiritual warfare, you have... Do you know what is spiritual warfare? Praying in tongues. That is spiritual warfare. Praying... To spiritual warfare means fighting the enemy. <laughs> fighting the enemy. If, you know? Learn to fight the enemy. If you fight the enemy, he will leave you. If you don't fight, he will come in. That's how it is. You resist him. Resist him. He will flee from you, says the word of God. Amen? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And he will never touch your life. He will not touch your finances. He will not touch your children. And he will not touch your body. Impossible. Amen? Amen? That's the power of living in the spirit. And living a life, spirit controlled life. Yeah, already saw this. Leave this. Yeah. Amen? Say hallelujah. 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 Praise God. So... You know, all that I'm speaking to you is in this book. Yeah? This is not a sales talk. <laughs> this is not a sales talk. But my wife and myself uh, wrote this book because there was great demand. People all over the world experienced freedom and breakthroughs by praying in tongues. And they wrote to me and said, you must write a book. I have never written a book in my life. So prayer and myself got together and started writing this book. All that I have spoken to you is in this book and even more, of course, even more. Evening, I'm going to teach you how to walk in authority. It's in this book. It has got 45 testimonies. Read the testimonies. And it has got daily confessions. How to confess the word of God. How to live as a son and daughter of God. How to declare God's word. How to pray affirmation. Don't you know what aff Pray affirmation. I am a child of God. You know, this is affirmation. I am deeply loved. Greatly loved. Deeply loved. You know, God loves me. You know, God has given me the spirit of excellence. I will do very well in my life. God has given me the spirit of excellence. We call it affirmation. Affirm yourself. Amen. Through the word of God. And you will soar like an eagle. Amen. You will soar like an eagle. There are a few more copies there. Only if you want. Yeah. It's not a sales talk as I said. Only if you want. Please stand. And we get ready for mass. Amen. Yeah.
Take a five minute break. Take a five minute break. We don't have to pray. Uh, uh, priest will come for uh, mass, drink some water. And uh, if you have any questions, we'll take it in the evening. All the questions that you have that I've spoken on, we will do it in the evening session. Right? Yeah? Give me a smile. Very good. Thank you so much. I go happily back tomorrow. Yeah? Thank you. Take a break. Take a break. <laughs>